Here are some notes for the first section in chapter 10, section 10.1, about sequences, and in particular, infinite sequences. Uh, there's really nothing new in this. Uh, you have studied sequences in series before. Um, so this is really a review and maybe just an introduction to some new notation and also a connection um, to make to limits, something that you didn't know before when you studied sequences in Algebra 2 or Precalculus or whenever it was. So, definition. An infinite sequence. I was going to write a sequence there, but we don't really care about them in general. We're interested specifically in infinite ones. An infinite sequence is an unending list of numbers. And just when we say list, list implies order. So the order that they show up in is important. There's a first one, a second thing in the list, a third thing in the list, a fourth thing in the list. It's not like a bag of infinitely many numbers. It's a list of them. Um, all right, so here's some examples of infinite sequences. There's a familiar one, dot, dot, dot. That's the list of... Uh, counting numbers. Sometimes they're called natural numbers. You could call them the uh, non-negative, non-zero integers. Um, here's another one. Uh, here's a garbagey kind of one. They don't necessarily have to demonstrate a pattern. Um, uh, I think just about all the ones that we look at will, but it's not necessary for them to do that to qualify as being an infinite sequence. So that's one's not very nice. I wouldn't have much to say about that. Um, and so on. Oh, and I should also give you an example. They can... Uh, let's see, how about... Let's see, how about... Positive... And so on. So this is an, uh, this we would call an alternating sequence. It alternates on positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, and so on. All right, so... Um, that's, uh, that's pretty much it um, as far as understanding what a sequence is. Now, what can we say about them? Well, first of all, we'll uh, introduce a more compact way of uh, writing them. Um, this is called sometimes braces notation. And braces here means curly brackets, which are some, sometimes called braces. Uh, so the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. can be written like this. We put the term in here. And we say, what is the term if we start from n equals 1 to infinity? then the terms are, in fact, just those numbers, n. Right? So this is kind of like this sort of thing that you uh, have seen before in summation notation. I mean, start at this number, go up to this one, but instead of adding them all up like you do in summation notation, we're just making a list of them. Um, how about... That's the list from n equals 1 to infinity. Now how would you represent this 2, 4, 6, 8? 
in here if n is 1 and then 2 and so on. Well, it's just 2n. Right? Uh, here's, let's just make sure we understand how to do this. What if you have a sequence that goes up? We call this an arithmetic sequence that goes up by the same amount every time. Well, it goes up by 3 every time, so that'd be 3n. And then if we're starting at n equals 1, then let's see, when I plug 1 in here, I'd get 3, so that's too big. Too, too big, so that should do it. And you can check that's the fourth one, so 4 times 3 is 12, minus 2 is 10. Right? It's a linear pattern. So we get a linear expression there. Um, and then there's fraction-y ones. Like, let's see. Um, here's one we did in our examples, etc. So you might notice that those are powers of 2. There's two ways to do this. You could just say, you know what, it's going to be easier for me if I start at n equals 0, because then I can say it's just 1 over 2 to the n, because 2 to the 0 power is 1, and then it's powers of 2. Or you can say that it's 1 over 2 to the n minus 1, and then if you really just want to start at 1. So you can say it's the first term. So those are the same. Try it out. And uh, that's basically it for that notation, how that works. So we can see if you're going up by a constant by addition, that's how that shows up. And if you're going up by a constant by multiplication, then that's how that shows up, right? That's like you keep repeating that multiplication, so that shows up as exponential. All right, now, we say that in, sorry, I keep wanting to leave that infinite out, because I just sort of assume that we're talking about that. We say that in an infinite sequence, converges to some number L and you know I think that would make more sense to put those here so it converges to something some number L if the limit has n approaches infinity of whatever the, the terms are is equal to L. What is this A sub N? Well, that's just the expression for the terms. So here, A sub N would be equal to N. When I say the nth term is equal to N. Here, A sub N would be equal to 2N, right? The nth term is just 2n. It's whatever your general term is. a sub n here is 3n minus 2. a sub n here is 1 over 2 to the n or 2 to the n minus 1, depending on which way you define that. Right? So we know how to do this. So we could ask, for example, does the series uh, converge, and if so, to what does it converge? So uh, very simply, we just need to find what's the limit as n approaches infinity of n over 2n plus 1. The highest power, top and bottom, is 1. So that's 1 half. So we say, yes, it converges to 1 half. And um, if it's not clear to you what that means, um, I imagine it might be. But in case it's not, 
that means that as you go out in this list of numbers, the sequence, the terms in it are getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to one half. Right? That's what it means to for these list to converge. The list of numbers, and if it converges, that means that the things in the list are getting closer and closer and closer to something. In this case, one half. So all the things, all the tricks we know about limits could come into play here. Um, it's not really a L'Hopital kind of game here. Uh, I don't think we would be expecting that. It's more like old school chapter two kinds of limits. Um, all right, so you can try the homework problems. They're uh, not terribly challenging. I think you just got to make sure you understand this notation and how to go from a list of numbers to writing the general term like this. And uh, should be good.